Hi, I'm Jervis Lewis, and in this video I'm going to show you everything you need to know about email management in Plesk 12. Once you log in, you get to this screen. And the second tab from the left here, the one that says email, that's the one you want to be on. Click on it and you'll see all the email accounts that are currently in place on your subscription. Currently for Cave Johnson, my fictitious customer here, who works at Aperture Science, he doesn't have any email addresses, so let's give him one. Click create an email address and pick anything that the account will be reachable on. If you have more than one domain, you have a drop-down menu here that lets you pick which domain you want to set up the email on. And in this case, maybe we'll want to give him carl at domain.com. Before you hastily click OK, let's go through a few other options here. There's one tick box here which says access to control panel. And right now that's ticked, that's ticked by default. But if Carl is already set up on Plesk here, or if he's the only customer who's gonna access this, then you don't wanna tick this. It'll become clear a little bit later um, what this is. Let's give him a password. You can either pick your favorite one here, and there, so this is the password. This is where you confirm the password. Or you, you can have Plesk create one for you by clicking the Generate button. That'll be fairly strong. To find out what it actually is, hit the Show button. And if you're not happy with it, just click the Generate button repeatedly. And this will populate both these fields, the password and the Confirm password field. Notice that if you hover over the little question mark here, it'll give you a few pointers of what makes a good strong password. So as you can imagine, password isn't such a good choice. So click Generate, hit Copy, and remember it for later. And you can also hide it if you don't want people to peek over your shoulder. With this set up, carl at domain.com could also become a control panel user by ticking this box here. This is useful if you're creating this email account for someone else and if you want someone else to be able to change their password without you getting involved in that for confidentiality reasons then this is a good idea and therefore carl at domain.com with this password could now log into Plesk just like we are and change his password. We don't want to do that so let's untick this. Next tick box down here is mailbox. Now, this is something, if it's ticked, then emails sent to carl at domain.com will be stored on the server. That may or may not be what you want. If you don't have an email account, perhaps that is what you want. By ticking this box, you can access this mailbox via webmail or from a client like MacMail or any other email client from your iPhone, your iPod, your Android tablet. You can even give this mailbox a size and specify it here or otherwise just leave it on the default size and then it'll occupy as much space as there is available on this subscription. Give it a description so that you remember why you've set this up. It's a new handy feature in Plus 12. And click OK. And that's the first email account set up. You may also do other things. You can either create another email account or you just click into an existing one and see what's going on. If we don't really want to set up a new mailbox for this, you can just untick it. And by doing so, the server will accept email on this address, but it won't store it. It could alternatively forward them. Well, that's something if you already have a Google mail account or Yahoo email account set up, your, your iCloud email account, whatever, and you think, I don't really want to check another mailbox. I want everything to go into one mailbox. Then you can use forwarding. So this email that we've just created here, carl at domain.com, without a mailbox, you can just forward to something like cave at gmail.com. Click OK to save your changes, and now emails won't be stored on this server, they will be forwarded to Carl's Gmail account. Notice that if you go back in, you can use both of these things together. So you can have this as a mailbox, as well as forward this to another email account. If you want to, for, for example, share it with someone else. So imagine you have a business account and three copies of that need to go to three different people. Put them all into forwarding here, like steve at gmail.com and, I don't know, tony at yahoo.com. They could all get a copy if you so desire. Going back into that email account, 
you can also set up, instead of just forwarding an email, you can also set up an email alias. So if cave will also want to be reachable as cave.johnson at domain.com, you can give him an alias. This will not create a new email account, it just means that the server now knows that cave and cave.johnson at domain.com are treated as the same thing. So therefore, if people send something to cave.johnson at domain.com, it'll end up in the same email box that we've just set up, which is carl at domain.com. In fact, perhaps we should rename this thing. But rather than say carl at domain.com, I mean, his name is cave at domain.com, so let's change that into cave. There we go, email inbox changed. Notice that when you do this, this effectively creates how you need to log in from an external email client. So if the email client asks you what's your incoming and outgoing server, that'll be usually your domain or it'll be mail.yourdomain.com or it'll be something else that we may give you. And the username is literally this, cave at domain.com while the password is what you've given it here. There's one other thing, you can't look up a password once it's set. You can generate a new one and overwrite the existing one, but you cannot retrieve an existing password. So if you think, what was my email password again? Sorry, no one can help you there. The control panel encrypts everything and can check if what you've typed in is correct, but it can't retrieve it for you. So if you need a new password, this is where, this is where you'd go and just uh, either generate another one or type in the one you want. Hit OK to save the changes or hit cancel if you've made a mistake. Auto reply, as the name suggests, is something that if you switch it on, you can automatically send a response if something hits this email account. For example, hey, sorry, I'm on holiday for nine years and won't be able to check my emails. Uh, or if you're selling something and you're getting an email to a specific account, you could attach a file down here and send out a PDF of something if you've promised somebody, hey, I will get back to you with a specific document, just attach it here. And as soon as someone sends an email to this, the autoresponder goes to work and can either send a message down here or send a message and an email attachment. Or if the email address has moved, you can also forward this email to someone else and say, hey, sorry, I no longer work here, but my colleague XYZ will take care of this for you. The spam filter is an optional feature that allows the server to take care of spam for you. The way the server is going to react to spam is if you switch it on, you can either prefix something with a word, for example, spam, and therefore it will reach your email inbox as normal in your email client, but it will be prefixed with this, so the subject line will be prefixed with this. Or you could choose to delete all, all messages that the server considers spam or move it to a specific folder in your IMAP inbox. Now how the server determines what is spam and what isn't spam, that's down here under advanced settings. There's a filter that's been pre-trained, factory pre-trained, and you can set its sensitivity between 1 and 10. I've got mine set to 7 and it's catches a lot of spam, but it certainly doesn't catch all of it. But making this more aggressive, like 9 or 10, means that the likelihood of proper messages, real messages that you're actually interested in, may be considered spam and may be filtered out. So be a bit careful with that. You find a link here on how to train the spam filter a bit better. You can also specify a whitelist, which means that anything that comes from a particular domain or from a particular address will always get through regardless if the server thinks this is spam or not. Likewise, if you already know that buyviagracheap.com is always going to send out stuff that you will not ever read, then you could put that domain in here. So you can block entire domains or users at specific domains. So if you have one pesky person who keeps constantly sending you emails, you can just put them on the blacklist and nothing will ever reach you from that guy ever again. Unless, of course, he changes his email address. And the last thing here is antivirus. Antivirus is a little bit like spam. If you want to uh, switch this on, you can check both incoming, outgoing, or both incoming and outgoing email for antivirus. So it's checked on the server before it leaves it or before it actually reaches your inbox. When you've made any of these changes, one change, 20 changes, don't forget to click any of the OK buttons down here and that will persist all changes in any of these tabs for this mailbox that you've made. Thank you.